Good afternoon, dear brothers and sisters. This is the voice of Professor Peter Wuteba Kunta in the United States of America. I welcome you to this platform titled uh, the um, called Language Tutor. In today's lesson, this dear friends, I will be touching, uh, I'll be shedding light on the function of a grammatical aspect that is called onomatopoeia. Some of you may be familiar with the concept of the onomatopoeia. An onomatopoeia is actually a sound that is is a word actually that is given to, uh, in, a, in that is used in a particular language to um, in, underscore the sound that is made uh, that is associated with the word that is used. For example, if you in Western tradition, if you think about languages like French, for example, or even even uh, English English for that matter. The word, the, 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 the word, cocor the sound cocorico, which is actually an onomatopoeia, is associated with, uh, with the sound of the, of, the, uh, of the rooster, which is called, commonly called the cock. Uh, and so if you hear the word cocorico, uh, the first thing that comes to your mind is, is the, the sound that is made by a, a rooster, a cock. And, uh, and and so the, the, so that's the the origin of many onomatopoeia in excuse me in in western in western cultures and western languages, and so it is clear that from some of the uh, the readings that I've done that the sound of birds and animals uh, are normally associated with uh, with uh, many 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 onomatopoeia. Uh, I've mentioned the uh, the cocorico. You can think of the boo boo boo, which is the sound of the dog uh, in in the most uh, virtually all global languages and global cultures. Now, in my mother tongue, dear friends, uh, uh, listeners, and uh, friends on this platform, we also have my mother tongue. By the way, is called Game of uh, We also have uh, onomatopoeia. We have a, a bunch of words that uh, would would help the speaker. To, in, to intensify or underscore the sound that is associated with whatever whatever uh, object or whatever human being that uh, that, that that the person is re referencing in his in his or her or her um, her, her discourse. Okay, uh, I believe that the you know a couple of examples, uh, good friends will shed home will shed light or drive home the point. Uh, I will give you a clear example uh, of, of what um, what we we mean when we talk about uh, onomatopoeia in my mother tongue. If you said, for example, somebody said, for example, "wo go no buvimbo bang," okay, "wo wo no buvimbo bang," that means the man slap his wife bang, okay. Now, the word bang is actually not, you won't find that in a dictionary, okay? But clearly, good friends, it tells you the intensity of the, of the slap that the man gave to his, to his wife, okay? And so if you hear, the, if you hear a sentence like that, uh, you know that the, the, the slap wasn't a, a light slap, okay? Some people would not say bang. They would say ba, you know, in my mother tongue. Or not moving, but ba. But in most cases, my people would use bang, you know, to intensify, to underscore the weight of the of the of the slap that the person uh, gave his wife. I don't know for whatever reason you'll be beating your wife, but some people do, you know, uh, they do, uh, you know, they beat their wives in, in so-called trying to correct their wives. You know, if you do that in the Western culture, you may find yourself in prison. But anyways, that's a story for another day. Though some some people do that, and if you wanted to describe the intensity of the slap, you would say "we're gonna move him, but bang," or "we're gonna move him, but bah. Whatever you're saying, the bang and the bah, those are all those are all onomatopoeia in my mother tongue. Another uh, example of good friends that you could uh, you know fall back on to underscore the uh, the presence of the uh, of onomatopoeia in in, in Gimokoka is the you can say for example. Um, but so girl, but not to umbo, kung kung kung, you know. But so girl, but not to umbo, kung kung kung. So this uh, this statement means, if I had to translate this in the mother in the in the English language, 
it does mean the soldiers walked boom, 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 you know? Now, if you hear the word boom, 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 I mean, you won't, if you open a dictionary tree, you're not going to go and sit there and, and identify a word spelled boom, boom, boom. It's actually a, a again, it's, a, it's an onomatopoeia that the speaker is using to uh, underscore, to shed light on the intensity of the matching. For example, if soldiers are marching, they don't march like you and I will walk. They march with force because they are soldiers. They are trained to, you know, to show, uh, you know, uh, force, a force of, you know, strength. And so if somebody says, but so gyobu, but so means those soldiers, you know, but so gyobu, not boom, 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 boom. You know, when you move, when you fumo, they're saying that the soldiers walk boom, 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 and enter the, their compound or their home. Now, again, you can see uh, that the purpose of using the, the onomatopoeia, boom, 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 is to underscore the force that accompanied the, the arrival of the soldiers. You could just simply say that the so governor to wing ifuma, but that would not tell that would not if if you said that to a Moko person, the person will understand what you're saying, of course, naturally, but you they're not going to know the intensity that accompanied the matching or the arrival of the soldiers to your compound. But when you underscore, when you put that on the matapea, boom, 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 okay, of course, everybody sees that boom, boom, boom as a, as a marker of violence, okay? So that's, again, good friends, is another indicator of, of, the, um, of, the, of the presence of the onomatopoeia, the concept of the grammatical notion of the onomatopoeia in, uh, in Gimakoka, which is my mother tongue. Another example that my people are very, very, uh, very, very keen on using is uh, associated with uh, most people, especially women, uh, it's associated with crying. If somebody said uh, that, uh, you know, uh, that's uh, that the, the translation of that statement is 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 like this. It says, "The young woman shouted, wooly, wooly, wooly." Now, when you hear the word wooly, 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 to the best of my knowledge, good friends, there's nowhere on this planet where you go and open a dictionary and you see the word wooly, wooly, wooly in it. But when my people speak this way, uh, the purpose, like I said earlier, is to underscore the uh, the intensity of the shouting, the degree to which the woman was was uh, was sad about about the beating, uh, about the shouting, or, or not even sad. But the, the 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 desperation, you know, the desperation, the despondency that accompanied the shouting. If somebody shouted "wooly wooly wooly" in my village, people will will stop whatever they are doing to listen and try to identify the direction from which the sound is coming, because that is a, a sound of desperation. It's a cry of desperation, and my people, being people that uh, live in, commu in community in, co in the community. They practice what you call African communism, which means you are there because I am here. Uh, they will rush to the, the rescue of the woman. If you hear a word, a woman, a young woman, whatever, regardless of the age of the woman, shouting wooly, 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 that is uh, that is a sign that that person who is shouting needs immediate help. Okay. And so um, remember, good friends, that every culture, go, every language, I'm sorry, goes with a culture. There is no language. I'm a linguist. I speak like eight, nine languages, um, uh, the, every language carries a culture and you you have to associate certain sounds and, you know, with, with certain cultural significations. And so, um, and so that is, that is it. And so, um, if you look at that, you will, it will dawn on you that uh, my mother tongue is very rich on, 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 uh, very rich in, uh, in uh, onomatopoeia. Now, one thing that I want to say uh, is that my people uh, often, very oftentimes, use onomatopoeia to underscore uh, colors. For example, uh, when they're describing things, they could say, for example, matuwo uh, no you know, matuwo no Now, if you wanted to translate that sentence, good friends, I'm sorry, I'm getting thirsty here. My apologies. Uh, if so, if somebody said "matuwo ano fumbo chun," now the the translation of that statement is the car, the man's car was black chun. Now, 
The chun here, like I said again, guys, you're not going to go and see the word chun in a dictionary. So why do speakers of my mother tongue use that? They use that again to underscore the intensity of the blackness. Okay, the, the person could have simply have said matu on a fun. Okay, if if the person speak the speaker on, on, from my village said something like matu on a fun, you're going to interpret that as the guy the person's car is black, but when he or she is making this statement, adds the onomatopoeia, you know, it is an additional semantic element that tells you the degree of blackness of the car. So somebody says the matu one of fun, but he's actually saying in English will be the God, the person's car is very black. You see what I'm saying? And so the chun, which is used as an in a very onomatopoeic way, is actually a is, a is a replacement or an equivalent of the English adverb very, because very is an adverb in English. And so you can see how my people use onomatopoeia to replace other parts of speech. An adverb is a part of speech. An adverb describes a verb, an adjective, and other adverb. That's a function of an adverb. But there you see my people, they're interchanging onomatopoeia with adverbs and they funk they perform the same semantic they perform the same semantic uh, they have the same semantic value semantics by the way good friends is the rules of grammar okay when you hear semantic uh, i'm not sorry i'm sorry it's not the rule of grammar it's meaning okay the rule of grammar is called syntax in english the semantics has to do with meaning okay so my people do use onomatopoeia in order to have a semantic in order to create semantic value uh, so I've given given you an example of a of the, the color black. Uh, another one could be red. Somebody could say V on a boom a boom. Okay, V on a boom a boom, which means um, the fire it was red boom like that. So uh, if somebody says the fire was fire was you know V on a boom a boom, he's telling you the fire was very red, very very red. It's like a you know, uh, you know, a big uh, fire that uh, maybe I don't know wildfire, for example, and it's very, very red. Or the fire of a blacksmith, you know, which they used to uh, fabricate all kinds of things. So again, the boom thing, the, the, you know, the intensity of uh, the uh, of the redness is underscored using this particular onomatopoeia. Okay, and then uh, one last thing uh, that my people do uh, use, uh, you know, uh, still relating to color. Is the color white? They could say if somebody says, um, uh, ndi wo, ndi wo, no fumba chan. okay, you know, fumba chan, but chan. you the chan there, as you see, that is uh, it says, uh, it's telling you the degree of whiteness, okay. If somebody said, ndi wo, no fu, that's a clear, simple sentence, the man's clothes are white, no degree of intensity. No degree, no description of intensity of whiteness. But when somebody says in my mother tongue, he's telling, he's telling you that the white the, the person's clothes are very, very white. And so again, good friends, as you can see, the uh the uh the the function of uh of onomatopoeia in my mother tongue uh cannot be or cannot be uh, overemphasized because they not only do they make speech uh very beautiful uh i happen to i'm a writer myself i've written um uh, short stories uh my first uh, publication was done in the united states in 2005 and it's titled lion man and other stories now if you read that the collection of short stories which come from my people the folk tales of my people you will realize that um i am using a few uh onomatopoeia that i call from my from my mother tongue and that the purpose of my using these onomatopoeia is to underscore the intensity of the speech of my people. Because every person, every group on this planet Earth has what I would call speech patterns. Speech patterns are speech mannerism that enable people to speak uh, in a particular fashion that reflects the mentality and the worldview of the people. So, good friends, I hope I'm looking at my watch here and uh, I've promised that I will not go beyond... 15 minutes in each of my clips and uh, I'm seeing that the time is already getting to I've been speaking for close to 15 minutes and I'm sure that some people are already falling asleep because this is heavy stuff this is not some some, 
some stuff that you pick in the streets. So I would like to uh, thank you for listening to this video. And uh, I want to encourage you guys, for those of you who have fallen in love with my village because of my because of my teachings on, the, on this platform, I want to invite you to continue to uh, to subscribe, first of all, and to continue to follow me on, uh, you know, on YouTube and to listen to some of my teachings. If you uh, if you like them, uh, sh you know, like them, show the, the like. If you don't like them, show, you know, uh, we indicate the, your, your dissatisfaction and tell me why. Because my as a, as a teacher who has been in this uh, business of teaching for the past 25 years now, I, I believe I I do treasure the, the feedback of my students. And you are not you are not an exception. Thank you very much, good friends. May may God bless you folks. And uh, I'm wishing you a great weekend until we meet again. Thank you very much and stay strong. Bye bye.